Yesterday, howling gale, sleet, freezing bastard cold. Today, good grief, it's like tropical. Anyway, I am fiddling around with the electrics now, trying to work out why various things aren't working because I've done pretty much everything else that I came here to do. And so basically, um, when you're working your way through one of these wiring diagrams, which looks like a big bowl of spaghetti with some bolognese and meatballs on the top, um, what you really need to do is to understand the way a wiring loom works. Um, so if I look at the primary circuit, being the battery, uh, the starter motor, the alternator, um, and the ignition circuit, and then we've got secondary, which are those that are controlled by the um, ignition circuit. And then we've got the kind of the accessories, which are all the odds and sods then that, that flick the lights on, indicators, radio and shit like that. Stuff on a Lucas wiring diagram. So pretty much anything in this car um, that is connected or should be connected directly to the battery is brown. It's a brown wire. Dead easy. So you can see the brown wire. It's got N, N for brown, um, because B for black is the earth. So N for brown. Um, so we can see it goes from the battery positive to 62, which is, should be the starter motor, pre-engaged starter. So from the back of the starter motor, we have got one, two, three brown wires that bridge off the main battery lead. There is a fourth here, which is just concerning me for a moment, because that then is 65, which is a relay, and 66 for the heated rear screen. Okay, that's unusual. Um, no, it's, it's fine because because it's working the way it should do. So one of the browns from the back of the starter motor goes to item forty nine, which is the starting relay. We know that works because the starting relay kicks the engine over. In fact, we can go away and double check it by walking around the car. To the starting relay, there it is. And there's the brown wire down there. Big fat chunky old brown wire. So I can confirm, and I knew it already, that the starting relay is getting 12 volts. So we know that bit works. Where's the next one? Oh, what's a crock clip on the floor down there? Oh, we're chucking those around. Right, so starting relay is 49. The next one goes through to, or ends up at 50, which is the ignition switch. We know that one's getting voltage too. What's slightly concerning here is that there's a multi-connector which suggests that it's going to break down into a number of different circuits and I think this is possibly where the problem is occurring so I've got one wire that goes straight into the starter switch whereas this is showing there's one wire in that breaks down to three chunks one goes off to 69 the uh, which is the inspection sockets. I can test those in a second. And then goes directly to the back of 51, which is the fuse number one. So I can check voltage at the back of fuse number one and see if I've got voltage there. Because if I haven't, then that connection there doesn't exist. So let's go and have a look. Because I don't know which one's fuse number one and fuse number three. What I do is I go to the back of the fuse board. Here's the fuse board. You see the brown wires going to it very clearly. Uh, so let me test the voltage up there now. So let me balance the phone now. It's not wholly successful today, is it? That might work. I don't know. I don't care. If it doesn't work, I'll edit it out. Right, so let's. Uh, we're on voltage. Negative and fuck all there is nothing there at all check that out in a second these two were bridged and these two i don't understand how it worked because these two one goes to the radio and one goes to the heater and the idea is that these only work when the ignition switch is at positions two or three sorry one one or two so you've got position off position one position two and start yeah Looking at the diagram, the um, ignition switch should have white and red, white, brown, and brown and white. 
I can't work out whether it's brown or white. So what I'm going to have to do is to work out continuity between that and let's say something like the white circuit um, and then see which one of these will open through. The problem is I think the brown and the white will open up at the same time. Let me... Uh, I'm going to have to get another ignition switch and work out which way around this goes because I think what's happened is, although it's unlikely to have been soldered, I mean, there's nothing white on either of these cables. I've been fitting new bullets on as well because a lot of these bullets, they're, um, they're just nasty. So, once I've done these two, and all I do here is I bridge... Can I get that to balance there while I... I'll try and keep still. So then I just... With two hands, good grief. Push these two in here and then get a small flat blade screwdriver, like that one, and push them right inside. I did have a crimp tool, but uh, I'm not going to spend all day looking for the damn thing. Not a crimp tool, a, uh, a bullet tool that pushes the bullets into the um, into the uh, the holder. So the only way of testing this, I was looking at the manual, is that on the back of the ignition switch, which is that one there, White and red goes up to 49, which is the starting relay. So that 49 would only work if there was a brown feed going in and the, the key position was in the start position. So if I can identify which of these two browns is the brown that um, energises that start position, then I'll be in luck. So what I've done is I've attached one half of the um, multimeter running a continuity circuit check against that. And then I put the other half against each of these browns and work out which one, when I turn around to the start position, is going to be the correct one to go for. So you can just about see that then. Hopefully it will stay there and behave. So I'm just going to connect that on there, round to the start position, bugger all. And touching both there, which is not going to be. Oh, right. OK, that one works. So that one's brown. That one is brown. So this one here, by reasoning, is brown and white. So I'm going to shove that in to the brown and white um, circuit. So what I should then find, actually, is between there and there, So what I've basically done is I've, I've bridged across the two brown wires now and I should get nothing on the continuity meter until I go to position one, at which point it livens up. And position two. And position three, it then op goes open circuit. So your radio won't work when the start is engaged. So I'm pretty sure I've got those the right way around now. But we'll find out in a second when I connect up the wiring. Uh, so what I need to do now is replace that bullet and connect it up to that one and then Bob is my uncle and I've got a brother who's a monk on a custard tin they are Adrian remember that one right must remember my bloody gimbal so I've got the two small brown wires that one and that one and the big fat brown wire big fat brown wire goes from the back of the starter motor to the battery positive and ends up here that little brown wire there goes through to and feeds the flashing unit for the hazard lights because the hazard lights should not be ignition controlled. You need them running when nothing else is working. The other little brown wire comes through to here because if I pull it, you can see it move. So that's that one. So that one, to my mind, needs to attach into that circuit there. So I'm going to go and get... Next, I am going to get a double bubble one of those let's go and get a double bubble one of those that one in these aren't pushed in properly yet and it needs to all be insulated up so let's push that one in and now fuse one brown has a voltage and the other side of the brown fuse one is purple wires which goes to purple goes to 57 interior light 70 71 courtesy light switch interior light switch courtesy light switch and also goes off 51, goes along here and down here to there. 
So purple goes into 35, which is the indicator switch. So I should now get um, voltage at the indicator switch on the purple wire, which is hidden down here somewhere. In fact, I can just break the connection on it. There's a number of purple wires that go into the back of this. Let's just go and see if we've got voltage in the purple wire. So I'll pull this connector apart. All right, and we've got two nice purple wires going in there. Let's check that. Uh, yep, yeah, 12 volts. That's good. There was another purple wire. It's purple and black. Purple, purple, purple and black. That one of the edges there is purple and black. So we know we've now got purple going through to the uh, indicator switch particularly elegant right now but i've bridged all of the brown wires and now bridged together i'll tidy all this up later on um next is the white circuit so the white circuit is unfused but ignition controlled so top of those two fuses over there is both white so i am anticipating that when i put the ignition into the on position I should get voltage at those white sections. In fact, there's a white one on the back. This is the plug that goes onto the back of the um, instrument console up here. So let me. Dun, 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 Am I getting voltage here? I am getting. No volts. No volts. No volts. Any other whites on here? So that will explain why the white circuit, that's white and yellow, that one. So the white one here should be live. So the reason why that white one is not live. That one is white. Let's see if that one's got voltage to it. Vomit has turned itself off. So that white one there that comes off the ignition switch has got voltage to it. So what happens now? That one looks like it goes into the loom. Yep, goes into the loom and it buggers off over to the other side. So let's bugger off over to the other side and check the voltage on the white wires over here. I'm dragging something with me. Dun, 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 dun. Right, so, oh, I can see that white wire. There's that white wire there. I put a, a connector on it to go for the um, fuel pump. The fuel pump. Fuel pump buzzing away. Right, so let me um, balance that there. I am just going to check now, first and foremost, let's check that white circuit there. That's good. Let's check. That white circuit there. Now, where does it go to? It goes through to the top of this fuse. That's good. And then it bridges across to that fuse. No, it doesn't. What's does it bridge across to? It goes back on a load of other wires. So it looks like bridges onto that one which goes through the bulkhead so where does it go to on the other side of the bulkhead I'm not going to connect the fuel pump yet because I don't need that connected up so when it comes through here something it uses is white I need my torch Right, big fat wire that comes through the bulkhead goes off to here. So I need to trace back now the thin wire that comes off the middle fuse and work out where that goes back to because again I'm missing a bridge on it. Um, I don't know what the fat wire, white wire does on that side. Let's go back, just double check that. That's the fat wire that comes off the back of fuse number two. White, white goes to 56, which is 
Uh, no, wrong bloody picture now. Let's go back to the previous one. No, go back to the next one. Right, okay, so we've got fuse two. Two white wires go off the unfused side of it. One goes to 50. Fifty ignition switch and steering lock, which I think we've got, and the other one goes to the thin one goes to white feeds all of the bulbs. So am I getting white feed at the coil? That's a good one to double check. It should be. La 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 picking up bloody rubbish as I grumble 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 grumble. Right, nice big fat white wire. Um but it's not white, is it? Because this has got a ballasted system, so it's white and purple. But that comes off there, so it'll be white and that one down there. So let me have a quick look at that. Right, so that's getting twelve volts. Getting Partly out of that frustration and desperation, I've bridged fuses two and three because they're on the same circuit. I've bridged it on the fused side just to uh, to be absolutely sure and to set fire to something. Um, and I'm now getting a circuit through to the ignition uh, module. Um, what I'm not getting though is where on earth those two white wires bridge anyway. So what I is going to have to do, I think is count wires here so i've got one loopy loop there one loopy loop there that wire goes off over in the circuit so i'm gonna have to go and trace all these white wires back that one goes off to um i'm not being stupid am i i might be no, that wire goes to the coil. I know that one already. That wire comes from the ignition switch. We know that one already. There's only one other wire that goes back, and that's this wire here. And that goes back. What I don't understand is where this bridge is working out. So I'm going to have to get my torch in here, I think, and work out how these bridges work. Because I would have thought there would be a bridge, rather than a bridge within the fuse because there's two connections on the back of it, there should be a bridge between the fuses, like there is on my stag, which has got all of the white circuits bridged together across the back of the fuse board on the unfused side. This is the unfused side, that's the fuse side. I thought that'd be getting warm then for a second, but it's a bit of tape. <laughs> Especially as it's a brown wire. <laughs> a little bit of poo just came out. Um, right, so that wire, I fear, is the one that goes back to the ignition um, console, and I can double-check that in a second. Which will explain why I'm getting no ignition lights. What's not clear is where that fuse actually gets its feet from. Oh, Christ. The tin just went dunk. So if we follow the white wire... Back, these are all the ignition lights up here. So follow the white wire back, down through pin, whatever the six that is, goes down here, goes to the top of the fuse, and then goes back and bridges into, this is the point where I've, I've kind of got a little bit of a uh, an issue, because it's showing that there should be two wires off the top of the fuse, and I think they've got fuses 52 and 53 the wrong way around on my fuse board for some reason. The other fuse, goes to from the ignition switch and then goes directly through to the ignition coil which I know so I know I know this circuit is working here it's this one here that's not working that one and all the ancillary devices that hang off that fuse ignition lights screen wiper motor brake light switch um, are not working Reverse lights, which I'm only getting 9 volts out, so I'm going to have to double check why that is. It's got a bit high resistance, I expect. Um, but the hazard light switch, I'm getting voltage out. And also the coil ballast resistor, which is off 
this circuit here, but middle fuse in my fuse board. You can see why these things get fucking confusing. Right, I'm going to see if I can trace now where this white wire should bridge to, because I've got a feeling that that wire over there is this one. And when I bridged it just now, I got voltage to it. <sighs> Sleep pissing thing. But without voltage to it, nothing on here is going to work. One of the nice things about having a field full of old Range Rovers is that you can go and look at how the wiring works. Thank you, gravity. Look at how the wiring works on the other cars. Now, on the other cars, there's two wires that come off each of the fuse positions. So let me take that off for a second. There's one fuse position, only one wire. There's the other fuse position, two wires. So one wire has disappeared from the back of this fuse position, and it is the wire that goes back and bridges in. Yeah, so I've got a handy like it little... might have either been pulled out or uh, was never there because it was part of his immobiliser circuit that he rigged up, which uh, I've been desperately trying to undo. So all the other cars have a wire that goes from each of the fuses, goes back to the ignition column and plugs into that little white wire chappy there. So I've got to the bottom of it. Not quite sure why it exists, but it does. And it does mean, or does help me understand why one of those fuses is dead. Um, the other thing that's interesting is every single one of the other cars, these two fuse positions are the other way around. So I suspect it has been tinkered with. I don't know why it's been tinkered with, but it has been tinkered with. Uh, red and white, just check there's no other loose white wires in here. There might have been one that I pulled out, of course. <laughs> you know it. So I cut that, put a bullet on each of those, put a double on it, put a loop round to go between the two. And that will then give me a positive feed to both of the white circuits unfused. Good grief. I must admit, when I took this loom home with me, I did strip the whole damn thing down and rebuild it. So it's possible that the wire had been cut up here. I can't see too much evidence that it ever existed up there. It could have just been pulled out. You see there, there's two wires going in there and a bridge between them. And I think it would have been exactly the same there. Okay, I know what I'm doing now. I knew what I'm doing, I think. <laughs> Good news about these cars is, open the glove box lid and you could see all of this lot in every single one of the cars. Um, except for one, which had, uh, had had a significant fire, I think. That was the diesel car, the green diesel car. Um, a lot of the loom behind the dashboard is burnt out. I don't know what he did. Probably the reason that it doesn't, uh, or it got rendered to where it is now. Right, I'm just gabbing on. Let me go on with this. Wired up. Yes! Wipers work. I'm not going to tempt fate with any more. So I've got the wipers part, which is good news. So it means I can nip that bolt up. Um, everything's working. All the lights on the dash are working. So what that turned out to be then was where um, a previous owner or a previous um, supplier or someone had installed the mother of all immobiliser circuits by cutting a chunk of the loom out, I believe. Could well have been me when I rebuilt the loom, but there's no trace of that wire ever having existed on the back of the fuse board, and the two fuse positions are reversed as well. That wasn't me. I didn't take those fuses out. Um, because what it basically says on here is the one on the right here is ignition, an ignition or aux, but it should be bridged. You can see on that it should be bridged, and it isn't, it wasn't, it is now. So basically all I did, all I did was cut the wire that goes from fuse three, goes back to the dashboard, 
put a bullet connector in it, which I still need to push all the terminals in, and then bridged it across to the other white wire. So they're bridged and they're doing the job. And then this white wire here, that's the one that goes off to the fuel pump. <sighs> what a palaver, eh? Right, what I need lastly is a small screwdriver just to push all these bullet connectors back together. And I'm done. I'm amused to see on the side of the fuel um, sender pickup, there's um, three terminals, there's an earth, I know what to do with that one, but then there's a red and there's a white. Um, and there's no indication as to which one of these goes to where. Now I know what those two wires do. One is the low fuel warning light on the dashboard. That one is white and green. And the fuel light is, uh, sorry, the fuel gauge is green and black. So, like I say, there's no easy way of working this one out. I can't find anything online. So what I've then done is I've got the old sender. Um, I had to borrow the float off it because the other float dropped into the tank. Fuckity fuck. Right, so when I take the old sender apart, I mean, bear in mind, the reason I bought one was because the wire had come off the inside here. Um, I lift off the cap. Oh, the spring just disappeared somewhere. Never mind, it's all bollocks anyway. Oh, there it is. Inside, very, very, very simple. As the float goes up and down, this two contacts just move around. They move around inside here. The long one mates onto this variable kind of resistor bit here, um, which looks a bit knackered. But the short one, which is going to be the fuel warning light, mates onto this one, which goes to the green wire. Green wire goes to the red terminal. So from that, I've deduced that the low fuel warning light is the red terminal and the fuel gauge goes to the white terminal. So, summing up, a week before Easter, got all the controls on the column. I haven't tested everything yet, but the wiper motor was working, various other bits and bobs were working. I need to put some lights on. This light could do me coming back. Um, minor adjustment to this door. Now, opens and closes beautifully. Look at that. The exhaust went on. Cannot get that pipe straight, so I'm just going to cut it at an angle. I shall go at it without damaging the paintwork. I'm going to cut a new angle on it, because other than that, it's beautiful. On this side, all of the panels have gone on. I'm not happy with this back wing. It reacted to the paint. You can see all the way around the arch there, it's lifted, and all this paint underneath was soft. Um, this door, um, it does close, but it needs firmer hands to it. So if I hold it, it closes. Uh, front wing's gone on. Nicer gaps on this side than they were on the other side. But then this is the second side that I welded up. That was the first corner I welded up. So obviously it was a learning process. Uh, the reflections down the side are looking good. Um, what else have I done? It's been the main thing. Oh, boot floor's gone in. So boot floor's gone in. Use the new seal across the back there. Boot floor's in. Um, the only bit that hasn't gone in yet. <laughs> I've done the side windows. I'm just waiting, trying to get these... Um, bits of rubber here to fold back. The boot floor is about that much too short, so I'm just going to cut another section off. But the rubber that I had that goes along the castellated rubber that goes along the front edge, this edge here, um, the one I've got is knackered, and I just thought, for the sake of it, I might as well put a new one. New fuel pump's gone in, that works beautifully. Um, yeah, it's uh, really coming together quite quickly. Um, so I'm anticipating next time I come down. I will be putting all of the lights on the outside. Tailgate should be coming back. Uh, I want to get the deck panel on and a spare bump bonnet. Um, but the main thing really is to get all the lights and things on. So I've got all of the various bits and bobs to build those lights up. Um, they're all at home now, ready to be powder coated. So they'll all be ready to go on when I get back. Yes. Ta-da!